Good morning to all of you. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for allowing us to share our NRCP-funded policy research on adherence of the Philippine Basic Education and Teacher Education Assessment Policies with the K-12 law. This is a consolidation of three studies conducted by the team from Cagayan State University to Gigarao with the leadership of Dr. Marilyn Balagtas of the Philippine Normal University. I am Dr. Richard Gonzalez, a guest professor of uh, the Cagayan State University and magisterial lecturer of the Philippine Normal University, Manila. This report from three studies were done by the research team composed of Dr. Antonio Tamayao, Dr. Rudolf Vicaldo, and Dr. Maria Benita Balagan of Cagayan State University, and Dr. Marilyn Balagtas, Dr. Cecil Mardula and Dr. Teresita Rundoing of the Philippine Normal University and Dr. Mini Rose Lapinid of De La Salle University, Dr. Orduja Alvarado, former president of the Cagayan State University, served as our institutional consultant. As I have mentioned, this report is a consolidation of three studies. Study 1, look into the adherence of the K-12 assessment policy with the K-12 law. Study 2, look into the alignment of teacher education policy standards and guidelines with the K-12 law. And third study, look into the adherence of teacher education policy standards and guidelines with the K-12 law assessment policy. Collectively, this study analyze and examine the consistency and alignment and st of student assessment policies with the educational systems of the Philippines. It specifically examined the Department of Education or DepEd orders on classroom, national, and systems assessment, as well as the Commission on Higher Education, Teacher Education Policy Standards in relation to the K-12 law. Our study look into number one, the K-12 law or the RA-10533 or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. The department orders of that egg, particularly number eight, series 2005 on policy guidelines on classroom assessments. Department order number 55, series 2016 the policy guidelines on national assessment and department order number 29 series 2017 policy guidelines on system assessment and also we look into the depart the interim guidelines student assessments during the covid-19 through department order number 31 series 2020 and lastly the chat policies and standards and guidelines on teacher education particularly CHED CMO 74 to 83, Series 2017, and the policy analysis included policy analysis between statutory, statutory law, which is the, the, the Republic Act 10533, with the DepEd policies and guidelines, and between DepEd and CHED policy. Taken together, we look into the coherence and adherence of DepEd and CHED policies with the K-12 law. As I have mentioned, this report is a consolidation of three studies. Study 1, adherence of the K-12 assessment policies with K-12 K-12 law, I mean. Study 2, alignment of teacher education policies, standards, and guidelines with the K-12 law and study three, adherence of the teacher education policy standards and guidelines with the K-12 assessment. Collectively, these studies analyze and examine the consistency and alignment with student assessment policies in the educational systems of the Philippines. It specifically examine the depth orders on classroom, national, and system assessment, as well as the Commission on Higher Education's Teacher Education Policy Standards and Guidelines in relation to 
K-12 law. Our study look into, number one, the K-12 law or the Republic Act 10533 or Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. Second, the DepEd orders, particularly number 8, series 2005, 2015, on policy guidelines on classroom assessments, DO number 55, series 2016, on national assessments, DO number 29, series 2017, policy guidelines on systems assessment, and also the Department Order 31, Series 2020, Interim Guidelines Student Assessment during COVID-19. And lastly, CHED's Policy and Guidelines on Teacher Education, particularly CHED CMO 74-83, to Series 2017. The policy analysis include policy analysis between stationary Statutory law, the RA 10533, and DepEd policies and policies between DepEd and CHED. Taken together, we hope to look into the coherence and adherence of DepEd and CHED policies with the K-12 law. In doing this, okay, we did, number one, review of legislative policy. Second, identify we did identify the orders that provide policy guidelines on student assessment and CHED policy guidelines and standards on teacher education related uh, to student assessment that align with the RA 10533 third we also examined the and charted the provisions of the Philip of the policy guidelines and policy standards and guidelines in comparison with the requirement of the K-12 law regarding the K-12 curriculum and assessment. And lastly, we outlined the policy implications of the identified gaps. We employed a content analysis and policy analysis as well as expert validation to ensure that our analysis were correct and properly classified. Now we go to the findings. Okay, For study 1A, the key findings are presented in this table indicating that the research findings indicate that the student assessment policy guidelines of DepEd are comprehensive and in accordance with the K-12 curriculum legislation. Nevertheless, there is a requirement for ongoing enhancement of assessment policy guidelines for better alignment with the expectations of the K-12 law and to address observed deficiencies. These suggestions would enhance current efforts to improve the quality of education and to facilitate a more efficient evaluation or assessment system. The research findings further denote that DepEd has formulated extensive and meticulously organized rules for assessment policies. These guidelines delineate the fundamental concepts, objectives, and criteria for diverse assessment procedures. The study revealed that the guidelines for student assessment policies typically follow the fundamental policies of the K-12 curriculum law, including the learner-centeredness, outcomes-based education, and development. However, it revealed gaps in terms on the of the use of mother tongue and promotion of cultural sensitivity assessment in student learning. For study 2B, study 2B or study 1B, I mean, examine the extent to which the teacher education policies, standards, or and guidelines or PSGs uh, 
issued by the Commission on Higher Education align with the features of basic education based on the K-12 law. The findings are PSGs on teacher education are minimally congruent with the K-12 curriculum standards and principles, particularly on student assessment. A closer look at the CMO 74, 75, and 76 series 2017 reveals a commendable focus of developmentally appropriate, relevant, response, relevant responsive, research-based, and 21st century schools-related student assessment. This finding implies that the PSG show commitment to fostering effective student assessment that supports student growth and readiness for the demands of the modern world. However, majority of the K-12 curriculum standards and principles, along with student assessment, were not articulated in the PSGs. These standards include learner-centeredness, culture, culture, cultural sensitivity, inquiry-based, reflectiveness, collaboration, integrative learning, mother tongue-based multilingual education, spiral progression, and flexible student assessment. Simply put, this scenario suggests a crucial gap in the PSGs on teacher education indicating a clear need for revision and expansion to incorporate these essential aspects for student assessment and to ensure their alignment with the evolving educational landscape and requirements of the K-12 program. Study three, study 1C indicated that the mapping of the policies of CHED and DepEd on assessing students demonstrate a shared objective, uh, a shared objective of improving education by implementing an effective structured assessment procedure. However, the findings suggest that while CHED's program standards and guidelines provide guidelines on assessing student learning they mostly focused on assessments carried out in the classroom such as formative and summative assessments furthermore the ched's program that the psgs of ched placed emphasis on providing instruct instruction to teacher education students with special focus on training them on creation of tests or development of tests for classroom purposes only. The CHED's program at SPSGs do not provide clear requirements for instruction for teacher trainees in two crucial domains. One, using assessment results to improve teaching and learning, and second, equipping students for national and international assessment. Now, okay, we go on the policy recommendations. From the findings of study 1A, here are the policies that may be considered. Okay, one, improve the use of MTB MLE in the classroom and national assessment system. Second, Adopt the Universal Design for Assessment Framework or UDAF to promote cultural sensitivity in all students' student assessments. Third, emphasize the development of 21st century skills and global competence to prepare students for future-proof learning. And lastly, Consider incorporating assessment of transversal competencies into the K-12 curriculum assessment system 
and provide teacher training on it. Next, for study 1B, the recommended policy guidelines for considerations are for future revisions of the teacher education PSGs, CHED may consider providing separate program outcomes and performance indicators for student assessment across all teacher education programs that reflect all features of student assessment in the K-12 program. The proposed Enhanced Student Assessment Frameworks and TEI, which we have in our report, may be used as the basis for such improvement. Second is for TEIs. The course syllabi for assessments 1 and 2 should be contextualized per area of specialization, focusing on the features of student assessment articulated in the K-12 program. Also, they must pay attention to the features to features that were not adequately represented, such as spiral progression, cultural sensitivity, and mother tongue-based multilingual education. For DepEd, as a partner of TEIs in training pre-service teachers, DepEd may intensify student assessment in experiential learning courses like Field Study 1 and 2 and practice teaching undertaken in their schools. Future researchers may also conduct a study by examining how teachers in the TEIs articulate the seven features of student assessment in the K-12 program in their course syllabi and actual assessment and evaluation of pre-service teachers. Finally, study 1C. The policy recommendations are the CHED PSG should be reviewed to ensure that they provide a comprehensive training for future teachers, not only in the development of assessment instrument, but also in the utilization of assessment outcomes to enhance teaching and learning. The CHED PSGs for assessments one and two courses should also be focused on preparing prospective teachers to prepare the students for national and international standardized exams rather than just focusing on classroom assessment for grading purposes. The CHED should also review CMI 71 to 84 to improve assessment 1 and 2 courses. The goal is to incorporate subjects related to analyzing classroom and student data as well as making data-driven decision using student assessment. The Commission on Higher Education and DepEd can work together to synchronize the curriculum contents with national and international standardized assessment, so ensuring that students are adequately prepared for this significant assessment. This ends my presentation and thank you very much. I hope that this study is conducted and the results, as well as the recommendations, will trigger more initiatives towards improving assess student assessment in the country resulting to quality education. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. Assalamualaikum.